Victoria University and an expert in e-learning. Let's start with Arthur. You've been handling e-learning at platforms like Victoria University. How are you going to guarantee continuity for those students? Uh, thank you very much for having me, Raymond. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now going to what we call branded learning mm -hmm. or a hybrid learning. Mm -hmm. This one involves uh, integrating uh, technology and digital media mm -hmm. to the traditional instructor-led classroom activities mm -hmm. where you allow students to have more room for flexibility and then they can also be able to customize their learning experiences. It has more advantages and uh, according to the global trend, uh, that is the direction to go. Mm. What, what are the authorities saying about this blended learning? How are you going to be able to examine, for example, students that are doing blended learning? Uh, basically, we have already started and we have established the facilities. Uh, when you look at like Victoria University, uh, uh, the National Council for Education did an assessment recently and actually it established that uh, Victoria University scored uh, 84%, meaning that most of the activities have already been migrated into online teaching. So what we do, well, we set actual exams online, uh, we approve them online, they are submitted online and students do them online. Mm. Has the physical um, the change allowing students to get back into the classrooms, has that changed the nature of relating with online classes, has that reduced the number of students on online classes? Yeah, basically what we do, we try to avoid having large numbers of students. So basically we give students uh, uh, materials, they go through them, and those ones uh, which might require face-to-face -face interaction with their respective lecturers, uh, we give them a room for lectures, instructor mm -hmm. traditional approach, and they meet their lectures uh, for a short time and smaller numbers, mm -hmm. uh, of course observing SOPs. Mm -hmm. Professor, if I could ask you my final question, you are an e-learning expert. Uganda has had the longest school closure for two years and just recently reopened. What would you advise government to do with e-learning in, in the coming months as the schools open up? Yeah, the best thing that now the, the government can do is to make sure that uh, uh, the, 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 the learning platforms for, for e-learning are actually uh, kind of uh, uh, the internet is provided for free and students can be able to do e-learning uh, without having a hassle. Because one of the biggest challenges that we have with e-learning is that most students cannot afford internet, there are challenges of internet connectivity, there are challenges of power outrage ETC, but the main one where government can make uh, important innovation is to make sure that uh, they provide uh, online platforms which are free for students. Mm. Thank you so much. We've been speaking to Professor Arthur Hindisibo, who is an e-learning expert and academic.